NBC4 investigates speaking with former members of a Columbus church who say they were emotionally abused and exploited when they belonged. We thank you for staying with us for NBC4 at 530. I'm Jennifer Bullock. And I'm Brad Johansson, Jamie Ostroff, laying out those allegations in a series of reports all week. And since then, more has come to light. Yes, a lot and from quite a few people, Brad and Jennifer. I have heard from dozens who say they once belonged to Xenos Christian Fellowship. They said the stories they heard on air and online resonated, telling me they too were traumatized during their time as members. Some say they've even needed psychotherapy since they've left. Today I want to focus on one of their stories, a former Xenos leader who backs the claims of abuse. If you've seen any of the reporting that's aired so far, have I gotten anything wrong? No. Ian Martin says he grew up with Xenos Christian Fellowship. He left after 25 years. His parents still belong to the church, which changed its name to Dwell Community Church two years ago. I was in kindergarten when they started going, so 1983. Martin said he first noticed inappropriate behavior when he was in middle school. I remember going to a college parties like at the ministry houses. I think I was in maybe in the summer between seventh and eighth grade and like being given beer and like <laughs> stuff like that. My friend's parents had a party for her moving from seventh to eighth grade. And these adults, I mean, these are adults. They're not college kids are, you know, corner, like they cornered me and asked me if I was having sex with my girlfriend. In high school, Martin became more involved with Xenos. I was directly involved with bringing people into the church in high school and college. There's this whole aspect of the church that is based around everyone should be striving for leadership. According to Martin, that involved attending multiple meetings each week, plus leadership classes, which he had to pay for. When I was there, you were like 50 bucks, 60 bucks. It's not crazy, but you have to take a lot of classes to be a leader. Martin also described how he recruited younger members. I remember telling telling kids in middle school and in high school that, you know, your parents, they're crazy and they don't love God and you need to come to more meetings. As a leader, Martin says he did things he now feels were manipulative. From what I experienced, because I did this to other people as a leader, okay, we don't like this behavior that you're doing, so if you don't stop, then you will be excommunicated. What were some of the behaviors that you had to approach people for that were uh, objectionable within Xenos? Mostly around like sex. I met with my co-leader and the person that was above us. One of the primary things we would do would be to like talk about like confessing sexual sins. Uh, and what, what are all these other people? What do you know about all these other people? And where are they, where are they at? What did they do? What did they confess to you? Was that uncomfortable for you at the time? How did you approach that? Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, but you had to do it because that was the, at the time, you know, it's all framed around, that's the loving thing to do. Martin says he was involved in multiple excommunications. Now it's really powerful because you don't have anyone. We've separated you from your family. We've separated you from your friends from the outside. We've, we've done a really good job of making you part of this system, and now we have control over you. Now, it is important to point this out. I have been contacted on social media by two people who identified themselves as current members of Dwell. They said their experiences at the church have been positive and that the stories that they have seen here have unfairly painted Dwell in a negative light. I requested interviews from both of those people, but I haven't gotten a reply. Dwell leadership also posted a response to our reporting on a public page on their website. It reads in part, we sincerely want to grow from mistakes and repent from any sins we've committed, but it's difficult to respond to claims on social media that are unfalsifiable. There is no feasible way to interact with an anonymous person or with anonymous claims. Now we should evaluate claims on a case by case basis. We would be remiss if we didn't hear both sides of the story before making a judgment. Now, the people quoted in our reports were not anonymous, although I did speak to some who wanted their name off the record. I asked church elders today again to speak with me on camera, 
but I have not heard back. To see my previous reports on Xenos, head to NBC4I.com slash investigates.